Well, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Inman, and you're now listening to the Word of Deliverance. we got great things in store for you today. Melanie, the Bible is full of great things, and I believe people today don't have a lot of time to maybe do all the searching and things that we do, so we're going to help them a little bit and bring out some of the things that I believe people need to know that uh, we find in the book of First Peter is a good example, and I think that people really want to hear what you got to say today. Amen. The Bible talks about in First Peter verse chapter 1, verse 11, uh, some very startling evidence of what we may uh, actually see as a pattern. Mm-hmm. Because he says in chapter 2, he says this over in verse 21, that we're to follow the footsteps of Jesus. Yes. And I think there's many patterns in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Tell us what the Bible talks about here in First Peter chapter 1, and uh, maybe verses 10 and 11 and okay. uh, 12 if you choose, okay? Okay. Well, specifically First Peter 1. Chapter 1, verse 10, I'll tell you what it says. And this is talking about um, basically after our faith has been tried. And it, it's being tried that we might be found unto praise, honor, and glory. And that was in verse 7. Verse 10 says, Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. And then I'll tell you what the 221 says to go along with it. Did you yeah, it, if you want to, tell them about that because uh, he's talking about now your first Peter. He's talking about us following the footsteps of Jesus. Yes. But Jesus suffered in this verse you just said here. Yes, sir. That they talked about the suffering that was to follow. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that the suffer was to come of Jesus and what was to follow. Yes. So give us an idea of where we're going with this because mm-hmm. Jesus had to suffer. Yes. I think the prophets were probably writing about Isaiah 53 for mm-hmm. one place. Yes. When it said he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. But tell us about the great things that followed his suffering mm-hmm. because I think there's a pattern here that people have to get a hold of in order to really understand the Bible. Amen. And like you said, that we have to take this into consideration how Jesus is our example for us, that we should follow in his steps. And that tells you in particular in First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. And, you know, if you back up, you, it will tell you about servants being in submission, even Jesus Christ. You think about Jesus in Philippians. Jesus is God, right? He is the image of the invisible God, but guess what Jesus did? He thought it no reputation to be equal to God, but took upon him the form of a servant. So to me, first and foremost, that's an example that he left unto us, how we should serve one another. But verse 21 of this first Peter chapter two says, for even hereunto were ye called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. So again, we have this example through Christ. Okay, so Christ suffered, and after he suffered on the cross, the very first thing happened is I believe that the veil of the temple was rent in train. Mm-hmm. Yes. There was an earthquake, mm-hmm. you know, and everything happened here. Mm-hmm. The veil of the temple is how we got into the body of Christ, right? That's Amen. right. The Bible said in the book of Hebrews, that's his flesh. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, that we actually go into his body. Amen. And so if it wasn't for him enduring the cross, we wouldn't be in his body right now, right? No, we That's wouldn't. Right. And then what else happened? Then he rose and said, well, wait a minute. You got those saints that came out of the grave. Yeah, mm-hmm. they rose with him. They rose with him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so now we got them that come out of the grave. Uh-huh. So, you know, this was a great thing too. Mm-hmm. Uh, the bell of the temple was rent and trained. The saints of God came out of the grave. Mm-hmm. Amen. And tell us what else some of the good things happened. From The blood was already shed, so people could be yes. believing then, couldn't they? Yes, they could. Well, we see even with that, it says as he ascended on the right hand of God, and he was highly exalted, and also we received the comforter. He had to go to the Father that we can receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, Power uh, over death. It says this is the purpose that the Son of Man was manifested. He might destroy the works of the devil. Power over death. Now we can have eternal life. And like you said, given the gifts of the Holy Ghost now, through Jesus Christ and his eternal spirit, we can have eternal life now. 
power over death, power over hell, and again, like he stated, setting the captives free, and then grafting people in is an awesome blessing. You know, before it was to the Jews, now it's to all men. Amen. The Jews, barbarians, Scythians, we're all through Christ now. I mean, he re reconciled us to himself. Uh -huh. It's no longer a bloodline. It's through Christ and his bloodline. It's no longer to a so-called nation or a so-called sect of people. It's to all who believe now. We all have this promise, the gift of eternal life through his blood, Jesus Christ. Okay, let's talk about some of the scriptures here that he gives us in 1 Peter. Because this is the book about suffering. And it actually advocates the idea that every Christian has to suffer if he's ever going to do anything for God. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that someone may uh, get saved and doesn't have to suffer? Yeah. Well, there are some theories that you might say, well, if the guy got saved in the hospital and he never came out and he died in there, and you know, some of those things may be true. But actually, what about somebody that lives out here in the world and he gets saved and he gives his life to God with a commitment that he'll serve him. I want you to give me an idea. Can this guy live, according to the first Peter, can he live without suffering? No. no. I mean, according to even, um, it's in chapter 4, verse 1, but he that suffereth in the flesh has ceased from sin. So we're going to have to suffer. The Bible tells us to mortify our flesh. And no offense, but it hurts when you mortify the flesh. And to me, you have to suffer even when you have to come away from maybe certain friends or certain things you like to do. But we cut it off, therefore we can grow in the Lord and be changed into the image of God. We have to cut the world off, cut family off, cut friends off. You know, things that offend us, we have to cut it off, and it hurts. But in return, as we suffer, I believe that we're being perfected. And that tells you that in First Peter um, 510, I believe. Yeah. Well, and even in 1 Peter 1 7, it says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus. And, and we see here that if you understand that going through a fire, it, it's going to be painful. These trials and all these things that are coming about, you're going to do some kind of suffering, whether it's, you know, getting away from your family, getting away from the world, living a life that is godly is going to be suffering. And, and that was even stated in, and as Jesus, as he was on the cross, so we have to pick up our cross daily. And we understand that the, uh, the uh, cross living life and being crucified is the, one of the most painful deaths. So we understand that we're going to go through things. We're going to go through sufferings. Even in verse 19 of chapter 2, 1 Peter says, for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief suffering wrongfully for what glory is it if when we be buffeted for your faults ye shall take it patiently but if when ye do well and suffer for it ye take it patiently this is acceptable with God okay so you found out that we are not allowed really to complain right mm -hmm. no in other yep. words this is God's way brother Mark read chapter 1 verse 7 this is God's way of putting you in a trial to bring something out of your life. Amen. You know, this is what you call being in the grace of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you have to we'll learn about 1 Thessalonians 5. Mm -hmm. In all things, give thanks. It Amen. doesn't matter if it's a lion's den, a fiery furnace, yep. or wherever you're at. You're not allowed to suffer. If people say things bad about you, isn't that great? Amen. That you're counted worthy to suffer Amen. for the kingdom of God. Yep. Now, it also says in 1 Peter 3.18... Give us a little idea of what this says. When well, we go to 1 Peter 2, 24 and, 2, and so on, but mm -hmm. let's take them here. Go ahead. Okay. The 1 Peter 3, 20. 18, I think. 3, 18. pardon me. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. So this is something that happened to him after he suffered, after he lived the life. And, you know, you find out that he was rejected by his brethren. Mm -hmm. You know, he was kind of like a type of Joseph, or a Joseph was a type of him, I mean to say, yeah. in the book of Genesis. And we find out that many things today, I think, happens to people that they're able to suffer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want you to give us a little idea about First Peter chapter 2. 
And let's talk about going to the cross because he mentioned the steps. And this is some of the things that we have to suffer and we have to learn about Christian character Mm -hmm. and talk about why character is so important. He goes in this in chapter 3, verse 1. But really, if you don't have some Christian character in you, it's because you don't have any spiritual growth. Right. Tell us, Michelle, about 220, 221, and lead us up to the steps that they talk about because he says we should walk in the steps of Jesus. Right. It says in 21, for even here in two years are called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow in his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. So he had to suffer, and he went to the cross. Yes. And then he was able to save people. That's really good stuff. You know, you can get into this about every Christian. But now, let's jump up a little bit. We know that in chapter 3, he talks about bringing forth the character of God Mm -hmm. and how that we win people with our character, right? That's right. In other words, there are some people are not going to be brought to repentance by the word of God. They're going to have to see some Christians. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to know that you have a walk with God and they're going to have to see it inside of you. Amen. Amen. And you know, this is kind of what they talk about. That's why it says about the wives. You don't win them with your fancy hairdo. No. Amen. You know, you have to win them with a meek and quiet spirit. Yep. That's Amen. why Jesus says you are the light of the earth. You're supposed to let your light shine and let people see Christ working in you. He Amen. said, and he also says in verse uh, 1 Peter 3, 14, he says, But if ye suffer for righteousness, take happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So we see here again, it's going to be God and in your heart, and he's going to bring forth this spirit of meekness that you're able to help. Okay, because of the doctrines they've got today on TBN, and a lot of people, including preachers, have taken up and preaching their same doctrines that they hear. And it's easier that way. They don't have to fast and pray and study. But we know that's satanic, and it opens a door for lies. Because we know that without the Holy Spirit, in John 14, 23, he said the Spirit of God would teach us all things. And people that don't have really the Holy Spirit, they kind of bring things up on themselves. Tell us, Michelle, what does 1 Peter 4, 12 say? It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing that happened unto you. He says, But to rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. And he says, If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of the glory of, and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Okay, this scripture here actually refers to Daniel chapter 3. Right. Okay, how does that relate to, I'd say, James chapter 1, verse 2, when it talks about my brethren? Mm -hmm. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. In other words, James was telling them to be glad because Mm -hmm. God is going to get something out of their life. Amen. Now, Christians today have been taught they don't have to suffer. Mm -hmm. They've been talked about, you know, all of this false stuff. Charles Capps, he's on radio for years. That's all he taught about he could speak his day and never have to suffer a day in his life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they make fun of us that preach the Bible. But anyway, if you look at this, we are to know God is going to get something out of our life. Amen. What about uh, this Daniel chapter 3 talks about the fiery furnace. Right. Give us a little idea of of how they're going to what is going to happen to these people if they endure this suffering and they haven't did anything and bad things starts happening to them Mm -hmm. and it seems like, you know, God, why have you let this happen? Right. We've all been there before. Amen. Well, we know that they were put in the fire, fiery furnace. And as they were in the furnace, Nebuchadnezzar had saw, um, he saw three of them and they were loosed and they were not singed and they were not burnt. 
And he says um, that he saw the a fourth person like the son of man or the son of God. And then as they, when they came out, he had promoted them to great honor. And so when we go through persecutions and we go through, we are going to be promoted and we're going to have the glory of God rest upon us. Amen. I believe this comes through humbleness also because they weren't afraid, but they humbled themselves before the Lord. And they said, if God deliver us, we're going to serve God. And if he doesn't deliver us, we're still going to serve God. And I believe that humbleness and trust in God and total submission is very important. Even First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 tells you that. Even I like verse 5. It tells you, be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Okay, what about Acts, Acts 16? When Paul and Silas, bad thing happened to them. Mm-hmm. The devil got in it. They had uh, preaching the gospel. Yep. And as people know, if they've read their Bible, that the devil of witchcraft wanted to stop them. Amen. So he cast out the devil, and they turned around, and they had something for the devil. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't hardly God's timing. For them to stay in that prison. That's right. Because they prayed at midnight and God broke this off of them. That's right. Now, this is very easy to understand. We know that if you go through a trial, like you said, if you go to Daniel 3 and look at the last of that verse, and God prospered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and all the provinces of Babylon. Prospered them. You know, normally in the New Testament, prosperity is called peace. Mm Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean that you could be escalated to a higher position with a lot of money. That's right. And things like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, peace in your life means a whole lot, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yes. You know, this is what it is. Now, 1 Peter 5.10, it says we're only going to suffer a little while. Mm -hmm. But, Brother Mark, tell us what happened to Job after he had went through his stuff. I think if you go back to chapter 40, 41 of Job, you find out that only one of these little guys that was with him mm-hmm. had any common sense. <laughs> yeah. The rest Elihu. of the guys was a know-it-all. Elihu was the one that had common sense. He had the common sense all the way from chapter 30. He spends about 10 chapters in there telling Job some nice things. What happens to Job after he endured his suffering? Well, you know, and, and this is the last of Job, Job 42. And he says in verse 10... And he says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. So we see here after after Job's trial, after he lost everything. And I mean, he lost everything, even even his health. God turned around and blessed Job twice as much as before. Yep. I even like James. James 5 gives us a great example about suffering. Um, Verse 8 in particular, he tells us to be patient and establish our hearts. Verse 10 of James chapter 5, it says, Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. So we see right here that I believe through our afflictions and our sufferings, God is being merciful on us because I believe that God is trying to deliver us from self. I believe as we're being going through the fire, that God is also purging us and refining us to wherefore we are being found without spot or without wrinkle and without blemish. And Job had said at the very beginning that he was a righteous man, but at the same time, I believe he feared the Lord, but I believe he had some cleaning up to do. And in return, God glorified him and was very merciful and compassionate and pitiful upon him and exalted him. Okay, we had a guy in Bible class here about a month ago, and um, he actually asked us what the word chastening meant. He didn't really know this. So when you follow the scriptures, you find out that God gets things out of our life. He promised in Philippians chapter 1, that he would present us to himself as a church without spot, wrinkle, or a blemish. That's right. This is the whole thing about it. Now, in Hebrews chapter 12, Mm -hmm. he actually, Paul tells us about chastening. That's right. God's way of getting things out of your life is like you said about James 1. Mm -hmm. Here he takes the rich man, gets all of that stuff about money out of him. He takes the poor man, gets all of the pity out of him. That's right. And he gets these people that are trusting in riches, and Mm -hmm. he gets rid of that. 
Yep. He actually promises them the crown of life if they will endure. endure. That's Amen. right. Serve the Lord. So Amen. people today are discouraged. They get tired. They go back to the jug of wine. Mm -hmm. They go back to their girlfriend smoking a reefer. They go back to this or that or get their old fornication going mm -hmm. again. You know, but we as people need to know how to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, the question is, Michelle, in 1 Peter 4.12, mm -hmm. it's a good scripture. It talks about the fiery furnace. But in 4.17, he brings this stuff out about the righteous. Mm -hmm. Tell us what separates the righteous from the unrighteous. It says, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first began at us, what shall the end be? And be of them that obey not the gospel of God. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So you're talking about judgments begins at the house of God. Yes. But here he's talking about people that's been born again, mm -hmm. people that's serving God, Amen. supposedly been born again. Right. I mean, I know the ideal talks about when he makes his abode in our heart, he'll never leave us. Mm -hmm. So that's one idea that, you know, we have to base that on, but... We don't really know who they are. We know that the devil, according to Matthew 13, there's tares in the wheat. Amen. Amen. So anyway, when people come into the church world and they don't stay, they go through a trial. Mm -hmm. So I've seen them. They refuse to give up their boyfriend, their girlfriend. Mm -hmm. They refuse to get a job. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said he don't work, don't eat, right? That's Amen. right. I mean, come on, man. You can't be lazy and serve God. Uh -huh. God don't have no lazy servants. Yep. Amen. So the ideal of it is if you're in the house of God and you don't endure a trial, what's that tell you? It says that you're a bastard according to Hebrews 12. It says um, in Hebrews 12, verse 7, If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all ye are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. So that's really something, isn't yep. it? Amen. In other words, to be a good Christian, if you want to praise God, magnify him, don't be discouraged. I don't Amen. care what you go through, lift up your hands. The disciples ran out of the city and rejoiced that they were able to serve God. Well, you know, Amen. in 1 Peter 1, 6, that's what he says. It says, when these trials and temptations come upon you, not only rejoice, but greatly rejoice. Amen. So when we're going through these things, we are to greatly rejoice. And Paul even told him in Ephesians chapter 3, 13, he says, faint not at my trials. He says, for this is the glory that shall be revealed for you. So we see that we're going to have glory. We're going to have rejoicing when we go through these things no reason to get down amen it's pretty good too because second corinthians what is it chapter 12 verse 9 tells you that you glory in your infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon you and i like james chapter john chapter 15 verse 2 it tells you about jesus being the true vine and every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit and i believe that god wants us to bear fruit bring forth fruit fruit with good works and one more scripture hebrews 12 11. now no chastening for this present seemeth to be joyous but grievous Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So God's, he's given us some fruit. It is. And in that next verse of this uh, Hebrews chapter 12, mm -hmm. he talks about healing. Now, a lot of people don't understand this as healing. But when people go through a trial, sometimes their mouth has got them in trouble and God has to get that out of you. Yep. You know, sometimes they've been complaining, and that's mm -hmm. what God destroyed them when they come out of Egypt. They're complaining. Mm -hmm. And it says in uh, Hebrews 12, 12, and for this reason, he said, lift up, whole, lift up hands which hang down mm -hmm. and feeble knees. Mm -hmm. You know, he talks about making the path for your feet uh, straight, lest that which, let that which is lame be turned out of the way. No, he said, let it be healed. Amen. So people today that struggling, I believe God is still a healer. Amen. That's the Amen. truth. We need people that will serve God according to the scriptures. Stop listening to TBN and them liars that don't know anything about the Bible. They wouldn't know Jesus if they met him in a closet. Mm. And the whole idea is that we are able to suffer 
willingly praising their God because he has a way of perfecting us. Now, Melanie, right. you talked about 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Yes, sir. Let's talk about this. Paul said, I sought the Lord thrice, mm -hmm. that he would deliver this messenger from Satan to me that's buffeting me. Yep. And he said, Paul, my, my strength is made perfect in weakness. That's what does true. that word, it's a little different. Tell us what that word perfect means. This word perfect is meaning like a mature and God meeting all your needs. God knows how to supply your needs. It's a little bit different than perfect. It is perfect, but you know what it does? It consummates your character. There you go. Consummation of character. <laughs> in other words, don't you believe in God that he's going to make our character in us to shine? Yeah. Like oh, hallelujah. Son. Amen. Amen. He will be complete in him. Be complete in be him. Be like him. Be like him. Uh -huh. Amen. So this is what it's all about. Yeah, and I like Hebrews 12 also, verse 15. It's so important to keep your eyes on Jesus because you know what sometimes may happen if you don't, and if you don't praise God, it tells you right here in verse 15, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. You know what, being in the grace of God sometimes is hard, but you know what, praising God through it all, standing still, enduring, waiting upon the Lord is awesome because it warns you lest any root of bitterness bringing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. And it's important that we don't have our heart have any kind of bitterness in it or be ungrateful. And many people fail in the grace of God. And they get out of God's grace and into their own plan, their own way. They got a better way, a better plan, a, a, you know, opposed to God's. And it's so important, as we're stating, to praise God and to rejoice, knowing what God is doing for us. Again, as 1 Peter 5.10 says, after you suffered a while, the God of all grace so establish, strengthen, settle, perfect you. Amen. And that's what God wants to do for his people. Amen. And I like uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. It says, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. So if you do not have holiness and if you're not consecrated and set apart for the Lord, then you cannot see the Lord. Well, the thing about it is that God straightens our walk. The consummation of character comes through suffering. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We know that First Peter chapter 5 said, After you suffer a little while, he make you perfect. Morally and mental perfection comes through people that suffering, mm -hmm. that learns how to suffer with God. We used to sing a song, I've learned how to live holy. Yes. And God will teach you how to live for him mm -hmm. if you walk in the spirit. Amen. And this is the whole thing about it. God has to get people to seek in his spirit. If you make up your mind, you ain't going to hell. You will do whatever you have to do. Amen. Get up earlier, stay up later, stay in prayer meetings, get in scripture reading, and do whatever you have to do because you can outgrow your trouble. Mm -hmm. oh, and you can learn it. If you serve the Lord, that's exactly what will happen. And you know, it talks about holy. People don't understand what holiness is. Holiness is living a consecrated life to God mm -hmm. without all this worldly stuff being put in your mind and in your heart. Amen. comes through television, and all your friends, and the world. You know, but I think God's people is going to be a chosen people that is a royal people. We're a generation of kings. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's who we are. Amen. And you know, our names are in the book of life right now. I want to encourage those of you under the sound of our voice to write to us. My name is Pastor Inman, I-N-M-A-N. Our address is 518 Pleasant Valley, Riverside, Ohio. And that's Pleasant Valley Avenue, Riverside, Ohio, 45404. If you want to email us, it's Pastor Inman, I-N-M-A-N, at A-T-T dot net. I'd appreciate if you do that. And even if you don't send an offering, please help us. I want, to, I want you to pray for us and be a partner with us. If you can't do it financially, pray for us. But if you can do it financially, stand with us with an offering and help us stay on these stations. I believe we need to get the gospel out why it's within our power, power to do it. Because today... If you can do it, do it. Tomorrow, you may not have the opportunity. We're going to lay up treasures in heaven according to Matthew 6, 19, 20, and 21. Thank you again. My address is 518 Pleasant Valley Avenue, Dayton, Ohio, 45404. Our phone number even is 937-235-0246. I want to thank you so much. You've been listening to the Word of Deliverance, and for all of us here, you have a great day and pray for us and we'll be praying for our listeners. <laughs>